Hi everyone, my name is Matt Napier. I'm going to take some time today to record some videos showing you how I personally would set up a Digico console for some of the concerts I've worked on previously. I'm predominantly a monitor engineer. Uh, I normally work for acts which are solo acts which have a backing band or bands which have a predominantly main singer. So I often use the left right master bus to set them up on and the rest of the band go on to the stereo auxiliaries. So that said, the way I set the desk up is also similar to the way you could set it up for a front of house mix, but I certainly don't pretend to be a front of house engineer. Um, luckily, I've got some audio from the Roger Waters tour I worked on a few years back, and they've kindly allowed me to use it to show it as an example. Um, so you can see here in Reaper, I have the recordings from Breathe, which was the first song of the show and this is actually from the last stadium show we did in costa rica um so the inputs are there on the left you can see all the inputs um for this we've got 54 53 inputs uh, the actual show we had close to 100 inputs because obviously many more songs in the set and i used an sd7 but today I've got an sd1296 so i'll show you how i would set up a sd12 if i was going to mix monitors on a show like this um the first thing you have to do really is once you've got the input list is you need to put it into the offline software. You need to build the desk file. So I've got the offline software here. I'll show you how I would set that up. The very first thing you need to do is obviously configure the desk the way you want it for the tour. So again, file selecting session structure. Well, I've just unclicked it. There we go. And this is set at 48K for this show. Um, you could do 96. There's a whole debate there about the reasons for being 96 or 48. Uh, we can go into that some other time. Uh, for this particular show, I, well, this song, I would need 56 inputs. So we'll set up 56 inputs there. And I need 10 stereo auxiliaries. So there you go. So we can do that. Quick restructure. Give it a session name and save it. And then the next step for me would be to set up the audio IO. So this is the default setting on the SD12, two MADI ports and the UB MADI port. Um, we would use on the show, we would use SD racks. So I'll select an SD rack there. We actually had several SD racks on the tour, but for now we'll set two of them up so we can show you how we would do it. And these would be connected on a optical loop. So optical loop one, ID number 11, rack two, is going to be optical loop one id 12 and then obviously you would populate your cards if you had the rack connected you can just do conform rack or alternately offline you can select your line inputs or your mic inputs depending on how your racks are configured uh, for today's exercise obviously i've got everything coming back on maddie so i'm going to use the two maddie ports from my computer so i'm going to change these to standard maddie actually i'll do maddie 64 give me a few more inputs you go, Maddie 64, Maddie port one, and port number two, I'm gonna set up, is already set up as a Maddie 64. Uh, the reason why I always have my SD racks separately, I add them on as extra ports, means if you uh, change these racks later on and you add additional things, the physical outputs on the back of the desk are always still represented. So once you've got your desk configured, the next thing you need to do is do your patching. Now there's two ways to patch on a Digico. Uh, one is you can tap on the screen, and that pulls up the input here on the channel strips. Or if you know your input list and you're using the offline software, I quite often find it's faster to use the channel list function under layout, select your input channels, change to edit, and then that way you can quite happily type in your first channel, hit tab, go to your second channel, third channel, and so on. So that does your naming. I tend to name all my inputs um, off the channel list as I go down. And then if I get to a stereo channel, so let's say down here, imagine I've done the rest of them. This is going to be my first keys channel. Say, so, and I need to make this a stereo channel. So right click on the main input. And this brings up the same channel strip that you would see if you clicked on the gain on the actual console on this side. And so now I'm going to make this channel a stereo channel. Once the channels are all labeled and configured as stereo or mono as and how you want them, you can then go to your first input and select the number of inputs you have. We had 54. This will ripple them. So when I now select number one again, all my channels 
have now been patched the way I want them to be patched. So obviously I would go through this and label all my inputs. The next step is gonna be my outputs. So if I go to, oh, I also, sorry, I should say, when I build the session file, I start with just doing it one-to-one. -one. So I do my inputs, input one on the channel list, input one on the desk, and I just do it one-to-one. -one. Later on, I'll move them to where I need them to be. But for now, I find this is a slightly more productive way of working. So once I get to my outputs, I will do the same with the outputs. From layout, channel list, and I will do my auxiliary outputs. I will label them, select the ones I want to be stereo, and then I will do the same on my group outputs. Once that's all labeled, I'll tend to then switch to the console if I have the console with me. So switching back to the view of the desk, and now I will actually load in the session file I've taken from my laptop. So loading my session, and let's go for this first one here. Make sure there's nothing on the faders. Sorry, not a lot of space here. So here you can see, um, uh, how clear you can see on the screen, so you can't really see the names, but these are basically just labeled one-to-one. -one. So I've got my inputs labeled 1 to 12, 25 to 36, 49 to 56. I put them all on the right-hand bank for now. But that's not how I'm gonna operate them on the show. So what I next need to do is I tend to move and I actually copy, I go to layout and go fader banks, and I'll take them all from layer one and I'll move them to layer three. The reason why I do this is that way I've always got a place I can go to to see the input list. So for line checks or for when things change, I can always go back to layer three and layer three will show me my one-to-one -one input channel lists. But other than sound checks, sorry, line checks, I'll never actually use that. I run the show on layer one and I custom build the layer the way I want it to be. And the way I'll do that is I will choose assign faders. So this is now, uh, layer one, bank one, and I've selected them all to assign. If I now go to my layout and channel list, on the channel list here, I can now select what I want them to be. So first channel, quite traditional, kick drum. Second channel, it's gonna be my snare. Third channel, snare bottom. Fourth channel, is gonna be my hi-hat. Now, in order to make things more manageable on the desk, I tend to use multis for things I don't need to access really quickly or I need to get to all the time. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a multi and I'm gonna place it into this slot here. I'll select multi input. I'm not sure how well you can see this on the screen, but hopefully you get the idea. And then basically from these inputs now, I'm now gonna put my drums. Now this is why it's quite useful having them on layer three, because I can now go to layer three where my toms are and I can make all my rack toms join the same multi. Now, if I go back to layer one, you can see here, I've got my kick drums through to my multis. In fact, if I load this session up onto the offline software, I'll be able to show you a little bit more clearly. So here's the uh, session file loaded up onto the offline software, the one I was just building on the desk. And you can see here, um, this is my personal preference for the way I like to set the desks up. I tend to keep the instrumentation on the left-hand bank. Um, and you can see here, I've labeled them so I can see in a hurry what's on each bank. Um, the way you can label them is, if, again, if you go to your layout tab and fader banks, if you select on the actual button, you can label them here and actually put two names in. So you, drums and guitars, keys and tracks. Um, my utility inputs, uh, which is things like pink noise and other stuff, synthy inputs, and my talkbacks. Um, so you can see the multis that we were building earlier there. I've got all my rack toms built into a multi, and I've got my cymbals uh, labeled fish, because that's what most cymbals sound like, and bass guitars, electric guitars. Next bank's got the uh, keyboards on. Now I um, use my right-hand bank, I tend to keep my vocals on my right hand side and I tend to duplicate uh, these so they're on every single bank on that layer. So no matter where I am, the vocals don't change. You can see those I'm changing banks, the vocals stay where they are. That's because I've just duplicated them and put them in the same slot. 
Uh, the other side of the bank I'm using for my in-ear outputs. So these are my upstage musicians and some effects returns. Uh, they're my downstage musicians and some effects returns. And then I've got my groups, which in this case we use for Roger. So I basically use some subgroups uh, for the drums, uh, for the music and for the vocals. Uh, the main reason for having one for the music is uh, any latency by running through any plugins or external effects. And the latency was the same, but I'll go into that in slightly more detail in the next video I do. Uh, when you're assigning uh, things to groups, there's two ways you can do it. You can either select the lower section of a channel and select your groups there. Oh, we want to keep that into the Mac. And the other way you can do it is if you go to your master screen. And then again, you can go to layout and you can click the join groups button. And then this way you can select the group and then select the selector switch to assign it to that group. So uh, depends on how, how you're doing it. On the offline software, I'll often use this. Quite often when I'm uh, on the desk, I'll actually set this screen up as a macro so I can get to it quite quickly. But as I say, the next video I'll do, I'll go into macros in a bit more detail and also go into how we use time code to change snapshots and spill sets, which are quite useful for speeding up your workflow. So um, I hope this has been of some interest to some people um, and not too boring, hopefully not. And I'll uh, carry on with the, uh, the process in the next video. Thank you very much.